Well, now take down your fishing pole and meet me at the fishing hole. I can't think of a better way to pass the time of day. Rod Mob. This is The Splash, your Northern California fishing podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Scott. And I'm Sarah. And we're coming at you from the Rod Mob Treehouse here in, I ain't blaming the refs, Portola Valley. It's Monday, February 4th, 2013, and this is episode 43 of The Splash, your weekly Northern California fishing podcast. On today's show, guide Jerry Newberger and Clyde Wands talk stripers in the Delta. We'll update you on the best bites all over the rest of Northern California. And of course, we'll check out the calendar, this week's poll question, and announce the catch of the week. But first, Sarah, what's going on in the news? Here's Sarah with the latest headlines. Well, a 1,000-pound marlin was landed in Cabo on Saturday. It's the first 1,000-pounder to be recorded there in 10 years. Manuel Dominguez, captain of the 34-foot charter boat Ziggy, was running a trip for some older couples from Arizona, targeting Dorado and Yellowfin. At 1.20 in the afternoon, they had 15 tuna on board and were calling it a day, when all of a sudden they got a hit on an outrigger and the line just started peeling off like mad. Pisces Fleet Sport Fishing reports that at first, Captain Manuel thought it was a big tuna since there were big porpoises around. After 40 minutes, the fish jumped and they got their first look at it and saw it was a large blue marlin. From that first glimpse, Captain Manuel said he thought it was around 800 pounds. The tourists aboard the boat each fought the fish for about 10 minutes, but Captain Manuel's son and first mate Jamie, along with other deckhands, took over the battle. By 6 p.m., the fish had taken them 11 miles out. They had help refueling from some friends who brought them some diesel. And at around 9 p.m., the crew got the fish boatside and gaffed it. It took another half an hour to get the fish's head tied to the swim step, and they finally started the 16-mile trip back, pulling into their slip at 1.30 in the morning. That's over a 12-hour expedition with this fish. The next morning, they were able to weigh it on the marina scale, confirming it's one of the top five largest fish ever caught in Cabo. A marlin also made the headlines this week in Panama, where Grind.tv reports a fisherman was battling a huge black marlin when he started backing down on the fish, put the boat in reverse to chase the fish, and then fell. The boat started taking on too much water, and ultimately, the boat sank. Everyone was rescued, and the marlin got away. Over on the East Coast, the New England Fishery Management Council has voted for drastic cuts in the cod catch, cutting it by 77% in the Gulf of Maine and more than 60% off Cape Cod. Some local fishermen even called for a complete closure of the fishery at the council's meeting last week. The council hopes the new limits will give cod populations time to recover and rebuild after decades of overfishing before the 1990s. I would like to go fishing and catch a fish stick. That would be convenient. I could easily get a job with Mrs. Pauls. They just put me in a boat with some empty boxes. And I will return them to the freezer section of your neighborhood grocery store. Last week, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service announced $20 million in grants to 24 coastal wetlands projects in 13 states to help with efforts to conserve and restore coastal wetlands and their fish and wildlife habitats. The USFW's press release says that an additional $21.3 million in matching funds is being provided by partner contributions, partners like state and local governments, private landowners, and conservation groups. California is one of the 13 states receiving the grants. Guide Mike Koopman and client Bud Watkins caught the biggest California steelhead of the season on the Smith River last Tuesday. MyOutdoorBuddy.com reports the huge wild steelhead was 36 and a half inches long. She had a 23 inch girth and was estimated to weigh about 25 pounds. They were using shrimp pink yarn tipped with a light pink fish pill on a number four owner mosquito hook. The fish was about two and a half pounds off the state record. That was a 27 pound four ounce steely caught in 1976, also on the Smith River. Stay on top of the latest fishing action. Subscribe to Rod Mob Podcasts on iTunes. It's free, and you'll always get the latest episodes. 
And the San Mateo County Times reports that 20 spawning age Central Coast coho salmon were released into San Vicente Creek near Davenport last week as part of a large effort toward restoring the endangered fish to its historic habitat. Last winter, three-year-old fish were planted in San Vicente Creek, and over the summer, as many as 450 young salmon were counted. Once the Central Coast coho released last week multiply in San Vicente, biologists plan to expand the reintroduction program to other streams in San Mateo and Santa Cruz counties. Well, that's it for the headlines. Now for some tight lines. Here are the latest reports on the best Northern California fishing. Starting with saltwater, North Coast anglers are working a little harder these days to fill their pots when the weather allows. The new sea angler out of Bodega Bay is on the Dungies. Jetty anglers are also targeting crab and surf perch off Doran Beach. And still no word of Humboldt squid. In San Francisco, not a lot going on outside the gate. The new Salmon Queen treated 14 anglers to a load of Dungies and sand dabs on Saturday. Half Moon Bay legend Tom Matouche, captain of the Holy Cat, is running out for crab and sand dabs. Friday, passengers and crew got their limits just four miles out from the harbor. Jetty and shore fishers are after perch up to Pacifica. Crab and dab outings out of Santa Cruz are working off the mile buoy and off of Davenport. Perch are being taken from the beaches and harbor jetties. In San Pablo Bay, anglers continue to find sturgeon at the Pump House, Buoy 5, and China Camp, along with the occasional striper and flounder. Lots of perch are being caught from the shore. Perch and leopard shark reports are still coming from Oyster Point. Not a lot of striper reports from the Bay of yet, but some are being caught up in the Napa and Petaluma River. For a striper update on the Delta, we spoke with Jerry Newberger of DeltaStripers.com. Thanks for joining us on the show, Jerry. Glad to be here. Yeah, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the guide service, some maybe the specialties, the the fish you target, and, and how the fishing's going. I'm a catch and release fly fishing only for stripers on the uh, in the Sacramento uh, San Joaquin Delta, and I work out of Course Pirates Lair, which is at uh, the Delta Loop, a uh, corner of the McCombie River in the San Joaquin. I cover it out maybe down to south of Mildred and uh, up as far as. Um, not as quite as far as Hope Landing on the McCallney, east as far as you can go, and maybe west to uh, the Antioch Bridge. And uh, I fish for stripers in the spring and fall, and largemouth in the early summer and early fall. Again, top water only for um, largemouth fishing with uh, poppers and fly rods. Can you explain your boat a little bit? Uh, yes, yeah, a 21 foot Triumph Center Console, uh, but it was made in North Carolina, and it's a Tupperware boat, it's not a fiberglass boat. They're made in a rotary mold, uh, 175 horse, Suzuki on the back. Uh, very comfortable for two guys to fish out of. 85-pound uh, thrust trolling motor, dev sounders, uh, VHF radio, all the good stuff that you need to go fishing. Very cool. So how, how is the fishing going? Fishing is very slow right now. There just don't seem to be any fish in the system, but I think that's going to be changing I'm looking forward to a change about the second week in February when uh, the striper migration starts to uh, starts the spawning cycle, when the, when the fish uh, start moving up into fresh water to start to spawn. Right now the water is uh, warming up, which is a really good sign. It was down as low as 44 uh, a couple of weeks ago, and now it's up around 48. To me, the real switch is about 50 degrees. Under 50 degrees, the fish are really lethargic. They don't eat very much. They don't need to. Their metabolism is really low. But once it gets above the 50-degree 50 mark, they start turning on, and you can really tell the difference in how hard they pull. How about uh, what? how's the water looking for clarity and, and debris in the waters? There's still a lot of stuff floating around out there. The hyacinth has finally, finally disappeared. There's not uh, Because we haven't had any real flood stages lately, there's not a lot of debris. Visibility right now is about two feet, and that's not a bad thing for stripers. Stripers are, are if you remember the old days, stripers uh, actually uh, functioned well even with visibilities left in, less than one foot. In fact, uh, there's some uh, studies recently that the ultra-clear water that we, that we get used to in the fall is actually not good for striper fishing since uh, there's no uh, plankton in it for the bait fish to eat. So, Jerry, how can our listeners uh, get a hold of you and learn more about your service? You can go to my website, www.deltastripers.com. I do a weekly fishing report. Try to update it every Monday. Uh, sometimes I'm a little late. You can just click on the fishing report link. And I also operate a Facebook page, deltastripers.com. 
and I try to post when I go fishing on the on the Facebook page. Uh, sometimes, like right now, when fishing is really slow, I get a little discouraged and I don't publish every day. But when the fishing is better, I usually try to get in, even if it's late at night after coming off the water. And if I have a good day, I usually celebrate a little bit on Facebook. And also, there's a link. Uh, if you go to DeltaStripers.com, the, on the front page, there's a link to, for my email. And we also got a call into the Rod Mob hotline from Clyde Wands. This is Clyde. I can give you a quick report. We're back to trolling in the Delta uh, around the West Bank. There was three, two other of my friends down there, myself today, and it is slow, but it's starting. Everybody caught a fish or two. And just with the three boats, and I think I had the biggest one, around eight pounds, and then we got one other one. And we had one other hit, and that was it. But it's starting now. Uh, the water temperature is 50 degrees, and they are catching pit, uh, fish around Pittsburgh. They'll be moving up into our area. Probably I'm going out again Thursday if, it don't, if the weather don't get too bad, see what we can find. But we caught everything shallow today. Uh, I tried a couple deep, but nothing. I marked quite a few fish on the West Bank in different places. But they're going to get started. Good sturgeon fishing continues in the Delta. The mothball fleet in Pittsburgh areas are reporting hookups on grass shrimp. Now let's take a look at the lakes. Bass action at Lake Shasta is improving. Larger fish are being taken in the afternoon on A-rigs, swim baits, and crawdad patterns. Trout are found shallow and early in the main body of the lake and dropping down to 50 feet. Lewiston Lake has been producing trout for shore anglers, offering power bait and flies like buggers off the launch area in Pine Cove. Boaters have been working the Frog Rock area. The ice at Lake Elmanor is starting to melt and giving anglers better access. We look forward to reports as things warm up. Temps are still a little cold at Clear Lake, but some anglers got bass at Rattlesnake, the Oaks, and the midsection of the lake using slower presentations. Lake Berryessa anglers are getting on the trout using live minnows from the shore and top lining from boats. Bass are chasing Carolina rigs and drop shot rigs with shad-colored worms from the surface down to 25 feet. Bass are on the bite at Lake Oroville. We saw some good reports coming from the middle section of the river arm, West Branch, North Fork, and the slot. Using TNT M80 jigs, senkos, and drop shot worms, and coho salmon are lingering in the surface of the forks. Folsom Lake trout are being taken by trolling crawler, dodger combos, speedy shiners, and top-lined rapalas in the main body of the lake. For bass, try drop-shotting robo-worms in minnow patterns around submerged rock piles, banks, and off points. Black bass are being taken by drifting live minnows. And shore fishing for trout at Collins Lake is hot. Trollers are finding a few fish, but the power bait from the shore is cranking out plenty of nice trout. A lot of six-pounders being reported. Guys are getting into some bass at Collins Lake, too. Aaron Britt of California Reservoir Lures pulled in a 17-pound limit of bass on Friday. In the East Bay, San Pablo Reservoir opens this Friday at 6.30 a.m., and they've been stocking it up. 2,000 pounds of trout went in last week, and 4,500 pounds from Mount Lassen trout will go in this week, including 1,000 pounds of trophy-sized fish. More trout plants after that are already scheduled. Trout plants continue at Los Vaqueros, including many six-pounders. Cowboy and South Cove are hot spots with power bait. The water's still clearing up at Lake Del Valle. Reports are good, but not great. The fish are there if you want them. A 12-pound catfish was caught at the dam. Del Valle's got another trout plant this week. Saw a striper report from San Luis Reservoir that an angler landed a nice 33-incher while trolling off Lone Oak Cove. Portuguese Cove and the trash racks are also producing for trollers, and bait fishing for stripers is good in the forebay. In the Motherlode area, at Lake Amador, the bass fishing is hit or miss, but daily trout plants are producing limits. Rod mobber Leon Stepp fished there last week and landed a couple of nice rainbows. Last week, trout were reported to be a little less active at Lake Comanche, but they got a fresh plant of 1,200 pounds from Mount Lassen trout today, which should improve the action. 600 pounds went in at the South Shore Trout Pond, and 600 pounds went in at the South Shore Ramp. There's been a good trout bite at Lake Don Pedro for anglers trolling shad pattern spoons and speedy shiners. A hot spot has been the tombstone area, but the shore has been productive too. More trout plants are coming next week. Trollers are scoring limits of trout and a few small kokanee at Lake McClure. Top lining early and dropping down to 10 feet around the dam is producing. And recent trout plants at McSwain Reservoir have picked up the bite. The handicapped dock, brush pile, and marina areas have been good from the shore. In the Sierras, Lake Tahoe continues to reward anglers who brave the cold with enough max to make it worth it. Charters are also getting some browns and bows. Rick Kennedy of Tightline's Guide Service sent us a report yesterday. They fished Tahoe four days last week. 
Rick says they're fishing for Mackinac on the east side of the lake in 30 feet of water with the water temperature averaging 38 to 40 degrees. The bite has been pretty consistent for the max, averaging 2 to 5 pounds using spoons and F-16 Rapalas. Saturday, we were fishing off Dollar Point and caught some nice bright rainbows trolling orange and gold broken back Rapalas and Uncle Larry's black perch tipped with 2-inch brown grubs. Thanks for the report, Rick. Sounds like a great time to get out and take in the beauty of Lake Tahoe. Saw some reports that anglers are ice fishing at Boca and hooking some nice browns. Donner Lake is icy but fishable and some hardcores are out chasing Max. Still a lot of good reports coming from Pyramid Lake. There was an 11 pounder cotton released on Saturday and an 18 pounder on Friday. We want to hear from you. Got a fishing report, a tip, a review, a comment on the show? Drop us a message on the Rod Mob Hotline. Then listen for it on an upcoming episode. 662 Rod Mob 5. On the rivers, the Klamath River is cold but fishable down to around Happy Camp. Guide Scott Caldwell recommends fishing very slowly with night crawlers and row. His son recently caught a nice five pound steely by letting his bait sit on the bottom for a while. The Smith River has been kicking out some big steelhead, not a ton of them, but they're big. The river drops out quickly, so check conditions before you go. Lots of double-digit reports coming from the Eel River. The South Fork has been hot, and the Little Cleo has been a winner. The Upper Trinity River is warming up, and steelhead numbers are too. Fishing is good down to Pigeon Point. And the American River has been a popular spot for steelhead anglers, and they're finding some nice bright ones to 15 pounds. The Sacramento River around Redding has been a good spot for fly fishing, trout are being taken on Prince Nymphs, Egg Patterns, and Copper Johns. Trout fishing on the lower sack has been good down to Balls Ferry. In the valley on the sack, Merritt's Landing and Verona were active for sturgeon. Some striped bass were being taken in the port of Sacramento with minnows, mudsuckers, shad, and bloodworms. The low flow section of the Feather River close to the hatchery is good for steelhead. Stripers are making an appearance and being taken at Shanghai Bend and near Boyd's Pump. Trout fishing on the Yuba is good between the bridge and the dam. And diehards on the Truckee River are getting into a couple fish a day. In the eastern Sierras, Ken Sporting Goods says that the few anglers getting out on the East Walker River have been doing well. Things are warming up and fish are stacking up in the deeper pockets. Woo! Fish! Woo! All right! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch of the Week. This week, our podcast album artwork is courtesy of Rusty Hamilton. He posted some nice shots of sturgeon on our Facebook page. This one's a 64-incher he caught last year. Way to go, Rusty, and congrats on having this week's Catch, Catch of, of the, the week. week. Do you have a great catch to share? Just post it to our Facebook page or email it to us at fishon at rodmob.com. And now for our poll question. Last week, we asked, have you ever caught a keeper sturgeon? 28% of you said, yep, you sure have. 58% of you said, not yet, but you're trying. And 14% haven't gotten out and gone sturgeon fishing yet. Unfortunately, uh, I'm one of the 58%. I'm still trying to get my first keeper. And now for this week's poll question. You have to go out with the politices. Yes. They can help you hook up. I've been running across a lot of discussions lately on fishing forums and the web about boaters complaining about boat inspections at the local lakes. California is asking boaters to clean, drain, and dry their boats to stop the harmful spread of the invasive mussels. And this is important stuff, and it does take a little extra time. But I, I was surprised to see much chatter about guys being turned away and having to deal with I don't know, what I'll call uh, unfriendly inspectors. Uh, anyway, I don't want to get too political here. I'm just kind of curious, are you guys seeing similar issues? I, I sure haven't. Uh, what's been your experience? Have you ever been turned away by an inspector? Was it warranted? Head on over to rodmob.com to cast your vote. Upcoming events you won't want to miss. Here's the Rod Mob calendar. Well, this Friday, February 8th, it's the opener for San Pablo Dam Reservoir. They've been stocking up and will be open for fishing starting at 6.30 in the morning. On February 9th, the Tracy Bass Club has the Delta at Tracy Oasis, and the Delta Bass Club will be at Russo's Marina. Also on the 9th is the Angler's Choice Sonora Bass Club Manteca Bassins Buddy Tournament at Lake Don Pedro and a Best Bass Tournament at Lake McClure. February 10th is the Hook, Line, and Sinker Bass Tournament on the Delta at Russo's Marina. February 9th and 10th and February 16th and 17th is the 26th Annual Crosby Lodge President's Day Fishing Derby at Pyramid Lake. And to tell us more about the derby, here's Valerie Taylor from Crosby Lodge.
Okay, uh, guys, we're talking uh, with Valerie at the Crosby Lodge at Pyramid Lake. They're hosting the 26th annual President's Day Fishing Derby that's coming up. There's been a lot of great talk about Pyramid Lake, a bunch of beautiful fish being caught this year. And since the derby's right around the corner, I want to get Valerie back on the show to talk some derby. Uh, welcome back, Valerie. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be back. So uh, l- let's talk derby. Uh, what, what, do, what do people need to know about registration? Well, the most important thing that they need to know is that in order for them to get four full days of fishing, uh, they have to register before noon on Saturday the 9th. If they register after that, they won't be able to enter a fish until the following weekend. So really important that they get that done before noon Okay. on Saturday. And then what, what are the, the dates of the Derby? We have Saturday and Sunday, the 9th and the 10th, and the following Saturday and Sunday, the 16th and the 17th of February. Uh, when does it end on that Sunday? Uh, 4 o'clock Sunday is final weigh-in, but we, just, we hand out the prizes directly after that. Okay, and then uh, what, what other events accompany the Derby? Is there, uh, I heard there's going to be a dinner and a raffle, stuff like that? We do. Every year we host a Derby dinner, and that's held on Saturday the 16th. So it's the second Saturday of the Derby from 4 to 7 p.m., and it's free to all registered entrants. It's $12 for non-registrants, and it's usually just a ton of food. We also have a Derby hat. When you register, you get a free Derby hat. Can you explain how the Derby actually works? Well, it's biggest fish, and it has to be... um, per the Paiute tribe regulations. So in other words, you can't have more than two in possession per day, uh, two uh, 17 to 20, or one 17 to 20, and one over 24. Now for the derby, that changes a little bit because you have to have a fish over 24 inches. When you say a biggest fish, you're talking about trout, or is, is it any fish in Pyramid Lake, or is it just the, the Lahontan trout? It's specifically the Lahontan cr- uh, cutthroat trout. If we do happen to have a tie, then it's the first fish entered would be the winner. So uh, what about camping and lodging if people are interested in staying at the lake? Well, unfortunately, we are completely booked right now for the Derby. There is camping both at, down at the ranger station with full hookups. I want to say they're, they're about $25 a night. Or there is permit camping, which is strictly beach camping, and that's $9 a night plus a $1 fee for the permit. Great. Now uh, let's, uh, let's talk prizes. Uh, what are the prizes looking like this year? Well, the only thing I'm aware of right now is first prize, which is a boat, a motor, and a trailer, or $3,000 in cash. Do you know how many uh, fish entered receive prizes? Is that known yet? It's through 20th place. Well, cool. We are very excited about this. I, I, I definitely can't wait. And uh, for more information, you can check out CrosbyLodge.net or give the guys a call at 775 476 0400. Thanks, Valerie. Okay, thanks, Scott. On February 12th, South Bay Fishing in the City returns to Sandy Wool Lake in Milpitas. The event is a free fishing day for kids, and gear and instruction is provided. For more info, call 408-355-2254. Dates have been announced for the 34th annual Chopper and Hank Westbrook Steelhead Derbies. The Chopper Derby will run February 21st through the 23rd, and the Hank Raider Derby will be held March 8th through the 10th. For more information and entry forms, visit RowdyCreek.com slash Derby or call 707-954-2260. And on February 22nd through the 24th, the Fly Fishing Show will be at the Pleasanton Fairgrounds. We'll be there, and so should you. February 24th, the 2013 Stockton Bass Open Team Tournaments kick off on the Delta. All events take place at Lads Marina, Stockton, California. On Wednesday, February 27th, the official F3T Tour, the Fly Fishing Film Festival, stops in California at the Fox Theater in Redwood City. For details on these and other upcoming events, check out our events page at rodmob.com. And if you have an event you'd like us to mention, just drop us a line at fishon at rodmob.com. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for all your reports, and be sure to stay in touch with us during the week on our Facebook page. We post all kinds of pictures and updates there between podcasts. We hope you'll be getting out on the water this week. And if you do, be sure to let us know how it goes. You can post your reports to our Facebook page or shoot us an email at fishon at rodmob.com. And as a thank you for sharing your reports, we'll send you a free weather-resistant Rod Mob decal so you can help rep the mob on your car, truck, or boat. And if you got feedback or suggestions for the podcast, we'd love to hear from you. Just drop us a line at fishon at rodmob.com. 
And please help spread the word and tell all your fishing friends about the Rod Mod. And subscribe to us on iTunes. Or if you've got an Android phone, download the Stitcher Smart Radio app and add us to your favorites. Thanks for listening. And until next time. When the last time I saw a mouth like that, I had a hook in it. Keep us posted. Rod Mob. People are going to be missing their fish and chips. Mm -hmm. For God's sakes.